Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can relate an image to some geometries in Revit using Dynamo. I'm going to open a new file. I'm going to go with metric template, default metric. Uh, before opening Dynamo, I usually prefer to set the units on meters because then when we have numbers between 0 and 1 in Dynamo, it means it's between 0 and 1 meters, which makes more sense than between 0 and 1 millimeter. So that's uh, on meters. I'll go to Manage, Dynamo. I'm going to open a new file. So in order to bring an image, uh, I can right click, type image, and uh, there is watch image, which we're going to use later, read from file. I want to go with this read from file, so it's going to read image from file. If you don't feel like typing, another method is going through the menus here. So if I go to import export, we have image here and image read from file. Is This is actually the node that I selected here. So we're going to need a file and again you can right click and type file, right, and then uh, we have like file paths here uh, or you can again go through the menus, file system, file from path, right? So uh, we're going to need a file. So the input here is going to be file. So this goes here. Uh, this one reads from a path. So we can also bring another node to read the path. Now if I go to browse, I'm going to bring maybe this image. Uh, I actually search for some high contrast images. I'm going to go with this one, which is from uh, dreamstime.com. So I'm going to go with this image. And now the image is selected. The file pass the location uh, shows the selection, but we cannot exactly see that. Again, you can right click, go with image, and there is an option to watch the image to see what's actually going on. Okay, so this is our image. I'm going to relate this image to some kind of geometry. Uh, the main feature of this image is having a high contrast, right? So I'm going to use that. Uh, the contrast is a number, actually. We can consider it a number between like 0 and 1. So I want to go to image and we have an option uh, to get pixels. Or if I right click here, go with uh, pixel is going to give me the same node, pixels. So I have an image. I want to get some samples uh, on the X and Y direction and it's going to give me pixels instead. So now you see it's empty if I pin this node. Uh, and the reason I know this is empty is that this is light gray, which means there is not enough inputs for this node. Uh, for the sample, I want to assign some numbers such as 80. You can work with this number. If it's too low, the resolution or the number of pixels is not enough to create uh, the same or recreate the same image uh, with some kind of geometry. If it's too large, it's going to be heavy. right? I'll show you some differences a bit later. So I got 80 samples on the two directions. 80 by 80, which means, uh, which is going to be 6,400, 6, that's the total number that I have here, right? Now, I have a set of pixels here, and it's giving, giving me, if you read uh, what's here, red, green, blue, alpha, etc., etc. What I'm interested in is not red, green, blue, it's actually the contrast. So I want to go with contrast, right? Let's see what happens if I type contrast. Or I think the exact name is brightness. Yes, I should have looked for brightness. So let's see, here it says a color and here it says brightness. And I have the colors, right? So I can get the brightness of these exact colors. You know, each color here works with three numbers, R, G, and B, and alpha, okay? So when I connect this to this, this is now going to give me the kind of the a range of numbers between 0 and 1, which shows how white or how black the image is. Okay, now just to show you what's the minimum and maximum numbers in this list, I can go with minimum and maximum, minimum item, and we also have maximum item, 
just to figure out what are the numbers we are working with. Right now, if I connect this to this, it's not going to show me the minimum number. It's going to show me the minimum list, right? Because this is three levels, uh, so it, it's showing me the minimum list. So actually, I need to flatten this list first. So now there is only one list, not a list inside a list. Now, if I connect the flattened list here, I can see that my minimum and maximum is 0 and 1, which makes sense. Okay, now, uh, so I have a range of numbers to be exact. I have 6,400 numbers, right? Uh, that's because it's 80 by 80 samples, right? So uh, what I want to do now is that I want to create a set of maybe circles. Uh, for that, I'm going to need a set of points, so I want to go with point by coordinates and I want a range of points, a number of points. Whenever we're going to go with more than one item in Dynamo, we are using a list. So I'm actually going to use a sequence, so it's going to give me more than one point. That's going to be connected to maybe X and Y. Uh, let's say maybe this geometry is on a horizontal surface, right? Let's see what's going on back there. We have a set of points over there. But I want it to be actually, uh, I want to have, let's say, 10 by 10 or whatever number we have. I want to have more points here. I want to have a grid of points. So I would like to change the lacing to cross product. And this is 10 by 10. Let's say if we are going with 80 samples, how about I assign that to the amount? So now we have 80 points, right? And uh, we'll work with this. How about I go with a lower number for now? Let's say 40. Uh, and we'll practice other numbers. Uh, so I have a set of points. I want to maybe create a set of circles by center point and radius. What I'm interested in is actually relating the size of the circle, the radius, to the numbers that I have here for the brightness. And because I know that these numbers are between 0 and 1, it means that the radius of my circles are going to be between 0 and 1. So uh, how about I connect this to the radius? Uh, I actually want to connect this to the radius. Uh, you can also get rid of this part. I just put this list flattened to get the minimum and maximum. Uh, so, or I can just keep it here. It's okay. So now you see that we have, uh, it's starting to kind of create that image over there for us. I want to hide the points so we can only see the image. Now, some of them are a little bit too much inside each other, right? So there are two ways to fix this. Right. How about I clean up here a little bit? I would like to um, group some of these items so it's easier to to read them. So, for instance, this group of uh, notes here are responsible to read the image and give pixels. Okay, so if I open this file later, I know what I did here by naming the groups, right? And uh, these two nodes here are responsible to create a set of nodes, uh, a set of points actually. So I'm going to have a grid of points here. Okay. And you can, of course, change the colors. You can change this one to a different color. And this one, which is a geometry, I'm going to leave it on green. So I know the green groups are geometries. This is just a set of numbers. It's not a geometry, actually a set of colors. So uh, what I want to do here uh, is that the reason the, the circles are inside each other is that the distance is between the circles is 1. We know it from here the step size is 1. And uh, on the other hand, we know that the um, highest value for the radius is also 1. So I can do two things. I can either assign, let's say, number 2 to the step, so the circles are going to be away from each other, right? But maybe this is now too big. So another way to do that is to 
keep the distance on one on the step so this is the distance between the points but uh, I can either multiply this number by half right so I want to bring a code block I want to say a times 0.5 so whatever I have here a times 0.5 is going to be uh, multiplied by half so the maximum number I have instead of 1 is going to be um, instead of 1 is going to be 0.5 I can assign this to the radius if I assign this here you see that my minimum and maximum is now 0 and 5 so I know there is no overlap between the circles because um, because even if they are 0.5 even if two of them are 0.5 next to each other, then um, I know that the step size is 1, so there is no way the circles are overlapping, right? Now, just to show you some stuff here, uh, let's see what happens. Do you remember we got samples? And I told you we're going to talk about this number. If I change this, let's say, to 10, it's still creating that tiger, but because the samples are very low, there is not a good resolution here. So see what happens as I increase the number of samples. The higher this number, the more, let's say it's 100, um, the more readable your actual image is. So see now it's very uh, nice and beautiful here, right? But on the other hand, it's going to be a heavy file if you import it into Revit. So I'm going to go with kind of somewhere in between an optimum number where still I can see the image but uh, actually uh, I can see the image but um, uh, it's not losing a lot of the um, visibility either. Uh, now if you want to make your pattern smaller you can either change the scale later in Revit when you import it or uh, for instance let's say Maybe I want the circles to be every half a meter, so 0.5 goes to the step size, right? In that case, if I want to avoid uh, the overlapping here, I need to multiply this by 0.25, so the maximum distance uh, is going to be 0.25. The maximum distance should not be larger than the radius of the circles. Uh, and you can just uh, keep going. Let's say if I have 0.25 here, so that this, the circles are really close, I need to multiply this, let me see, by uh, 0.125. So the maximum number is the same as the radius here. So this number is the kind of the maximum diameter. So this number is double this number. So this still makes sense, right? So now, uh, you see we have a nice image over there. Feel free to go with different sample sizes. You can try other samples. Um, uh, but this is how we can start making geometries out of images. Uh, if you work on like a 3D, a 3D uh, pattern or something, you can uh, extrude your objects and assign the, the kind of the brightness to the amount of extrusion, right? Right now I assigned um, brightness to the radius of the circles. And you can work with different images. Um, and finally, when you have circles, if you want to kind of instead of hollow circles have a, a surface, you can simply patch them. So I'm going to go with surface by patch. Uh, and now if I zoom in here, yeah, actually it also is showing that in Revit as well. And when you import it, it's going to be actual objects here. And uh, when I zoom in here, you see that this is actually patched surfaces. They are not hollow circles anymore. Uh, and finally, actually, uh, you can also union the surfaces. Sometimes it helps to kind of... Um, easily import them into Revit. So if you go with union, there is this by union for solids and by union for surfaces. Make sure that you choose the correct one. Now that we have surfaces, I want to go with by union for surfaces. Uh, and maybe it's a good time to change this to manual so it's not going to crash. Connect surfaces, uh, surface to surfaces. And I'm going to save my file and then run it. I'm going to run the file. 
So now you see here, instead of 3,600 surfaces, now we got 60. Actually, it also flattened that. So instead of a list inside a list, it put all of them in one list. Uh, you can try union another time. I'm not sure if it's going to make the objects um, into one because there is no overlap here, but we can, of course, try it. So surface by union again. Let's see if it can uh, reduce the number of surfaces even more. Actually, it does not. Okay, so we can uh, leave it here and this can be uh, imported into Revit. Uh, the reason we have a warning here, it says that the circle radius uh, must be non-zero. So it means that wherever we had that circle with a radius of zero, it just did not create the circle. Uh, it's just a point. So when you import it, there's going to be nothing for the circles when there is a radius of zero, right? Uh, so this is just a warning. There is nothing that we need to do about it. It created the pattern that we wanted anyway. Uh, so when it gets orange uh, here, when the node gets orange, yeah, if you know what's going on, you can decide to ignore it, which I'm going to do right now. But if the, um, the node goes red, then you need to take care of it. Uh, one last thing here, uh, when I multiply the numbers, so instead of numbers being between 0 and 1, they are now between 0 and 0.125. Another way I could have done this was to remap the range, right? So I could have assigned this number here, and I, I could have told it that instead of numbers going between 0 and 1, we know that the brightness is between 0 and 1, go with numbers between 0 for the minimum, and the new maximum would have been 0.125. This would go here, and I need to run this. So now you see it's still going to give me 3600 numbers, uh, but it kind of uh, put them in a new range, which is instead of 0 and 1, it's between 0 and 0 0.125. If you want to double check, if I connect uh, the new list here, you, should, you see that it's between 0 and 0 0.125. So you can either uh, multiply it by this number, by a number, and then uh, decide about what number you want to go with. Or you can uh, go with a new range. Both of them would do the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to maybe uh, get rid of this part. I don't want to confuse you. So you see it didn't change the range. So there are just two methods to do the same thing. Uh, I want to group these items as the maybe brightness values and I know that this is not geometry. I'm going to keep it the same color as this one because I want my geometry groups to be green so I know which items are geometry. I'm going to also group these as my circle surfaces because they are actually surfaces.